Hey there, welcome back to part 29 of our ZBrush tutorial. Now we're moving on to the main event, the supercharger. For this particular model, I'm starting with a spiral 3D primitive. You can grab this primitive by selecting the star and clicking on the tool. You can pick it from the pop-up that appears. These are the default settings it comes with, but here's how I set mine up. Radial coverage at 1000, start thickness at 70, end thickness at 45, start radius at 100, end radius at 35, start and end displacement at 0, start and end twist at 0, S divides at 16, and L divides at 100. Since we're dealing with a primitive, we need to go to the top of the tool palette and click on Make Poly Mesh 3D. Now we're all set to get started. Press QC50 and select Transpose Flat Island. Hold Control and move upwards with the gizmo to extrude it. Then we want to scale it up just a touch. Let's do another extrusion with the gizmo and move it into place. Next we're going to Q-mesh the poly loop and then slide the edge loop down slightly. We need to add in a few more edge loops to quad it up. Next we'll press QC50 again. Unmask the edge loop and control click on the model to blur the mask. Then we can run a relax. Time to press Crease PG. We'll cumulus the top polygroup island and add a little bit of thickness. Set the crease level to 2. Next we'll add a couple more edge loops at the top and then uncrease them. Press Ctrl W to group visible. Let's go ahead and press accept and delete the lower subdivisions. Now back to the Dynamesh utility. Set the blur to 0, poly count to 1 million, and use the auto scaler. Use the picker to set the resolution, and use the clip circle center to remove the middle. Now control click on the canvas to mask the model, bring up the gizmo, and select Cylinder 3D from the gear. Scale it up and get it into position. Control move with the gizmo to duplicate it. Next scale it down and then scale it into Z axis. Let's do a few more duplications and move them around the supercharger. Go ahead and select all the cylinders and split them into a new subtool. Snap to the side view and use the clip curve brush to clip them back. After that, Dynamesh the model. Let's pull up the gizmo and select the Cylinder 3D from the gear. Rotate it 90 degrees and scale it down. Select the cylinder and press Group as Dynamesh Sub. Bring back the other mesh, then clear the mask and Dynamesh. Let's go ahead and mask the model. Bring up the gizmo again and select Cylinder 3D from the gear. Invert the mask and split unmask points. Then we can scale it up and maneuver it into position.
Now inset the flat island and click to repeat on the front. Let's Q-mesh the polygroup island. Insert a couple of edge loops and Q-mesh the poly loop. Unmask the back polys and move them in. Add in two more edge loops, then Q-mesh the poly loop and hold shift to switch to a move operation. Then go ahead and press QC50 and adjust the creasing. Next we'll want to add in an edge loop to adjust the fall off. Let's press apply and delete the lower subdivisions. Finally control drag on the canvas to Dynamesh. Press control W to group visible. Merge down the subtool and run Dynamesh. Moving on, we'll need to mask our model, bring up the gizmo, and from the gear, select the poly cube. Let's invert the mask and split unmasked points. Press delete loops, then scale and position them into place. Now as we work on modeling this supercharger, let's take a moment to appreciate the technology. It could be helpful to understand a little bit about the parts you're modeling and how they function. One of the coolest things about the H2R is it's got its own supercharger, made right in Kawasaki's own workshop. This supercharger is designed to significantly increase the bike's performance, making it one of the fastest motorcycles out there. By forcing more air into the engine's combustion chamber, it allows for more fuel to be burned and therefore more power to be produced. But what's really fascinating about this supercharger is its design. It's small, lightweight and fits nicely into the bike's layout, so it doesn't mess with the aerodynamics. It's also efficient enough to do away with the need for an intercooler, which most turbo cars would need to keep the engine from getting too hot. That's due to smart design choices, like how fast the turbo spins and where it's placed. It's quite common for people to get a tad confused about how a turbocharger and a supercharger differ. Even though both are designed to increase engine power, they function in different ways and each has its own advantages and drawbacks. So a turbocharger relies on exhaust gases to spin the turbine. This turbine compresses the intake air, giving you more oxygen to combust and produces more power. It's pretty efficient because it makes use of the engine's wasted gases, but it can suffer from what's known as turbo lag. That's a delay in power delivery until the turbo spools up and starts forcing air into the engine. On the other hand, a supercharger is mechanically driven by the engine, often by a belt connected to the crankshaft. This means the response is more immediate because it doesn't rely on exhaust gases to get it spinning. However, because it's powered by the engine itself, it could take away some of the engine's power to function. So to boil it down, the key difference between a turbo and a supercharger comes down to how they're driven. A turbo uses exhaust gases and can sometimes be a bit laggy, while a supercharger is mechanically driven for a more immediate response, but at the cost of some engine power. However, both are amazing pieces of engineering. All right, next we'll drag on the canvas to Dynamesh. After that, let's merge all the subtools together. When we Dynamesh, they all weld together neatly.
Now grab the clip curve brush and flatten the top a bit. Now let's pick up the mask pen brush and navigate to the brush palette located at the top menu. We want to tweak the mask brush so it only targets the flat surface. To do this, hold down the control key and click on depth mask. Adjust the inner and outer depth sliders until the circle tightens up. With these settings, the mask pen brush will now respect angle changes. Invert the mask and tweak the angle using the gizmo. Once done, clear the mask and Dynamesh. We'll use the trim brush next to smoothen the bump. Let's repeat the process for the other connections. Now hold Ctrl and click on the canvas to mask the model. Bring up the gizmo and from the gear select Cylinder 3D. Adjust the size and position to match the reference. Let's hold Ctrl and move with the gizmo to duplicate. Our initial focus will be the cylinders at the back, and then we'll wrap up with the cylinders at the front. Regarding the supercharger, you might want to revisit and sculpt in more detail, or maybe even add more spirals right from the get-go. It's totally up to you. Since this piece is fairly concealed, the amount of detail you choose to add really depends on how close the camera will get in your renders. Clear the mask and run Dynamesh. Do another polish to smooth out the edges. 